Well, as you know, we're rehabilitating baby squirrels. So what we've got to do now is build an uh, outside cage. So it's called a transitional cage. It's going from little babies with our feeders. And now we're going to be transporting them from indoors, outside. I got an extra long drill bit and what I did is I put electrical tape and you tape it so that way you don't go through into the concrete and you don't go through the other side of the wood. These screws that I'm using, they're a uh, number two bit, a square bit on here and these are special coated uh, screws so that they won't rust and corrode and, and make those nasty streaks on the side of wood like you normally see. Eh, they're a little bit more expensive but they don't work for the long way. I've already started making the angles for the roof and by laying it out, this is going to be our angle, approximately like that. See all my cuts lined up? Yeah, that looks real good. What I'm working on right here is the top part and I'm going to build the two sides and then I'm going to take the two sides out on location. And then... Now that's going to be the end. Uh, that's our one side, one end. Uh, the other end is going to be a mirror end just like that and then we'll just connect them with like I say the seven foot runners and, um, and that's it. Uh, make my second piece for my other end. Uh, and, and of course, I'm, me, I like to do things simple, easy, quick. And so what I plan on doing is just taking this board, make a mirror image of it on the already existing one, scribing it, and that's where my angle cut is going to be. Um, I've already done it with the six foot section and the angle piece. So I put my first screw in there, got everything squared away. Again, like I said, I love pilot holes. It keeps the wood from splitting. Uh, I like to countersink them too. I like to countersink my screws. Look at that. Perfect. All right, we got the sides put together and uh, brought it out here and we've already attached two of the boards. This is Papa Chaz, if you remember. Um, he's helping me put this together. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start. We put the front faces on and now we're about to put the back faces on. Well, we got it into place and this is basically what it's going to look like. We're going to put two doors on the front here. All right, my wife went and picked up some of this hardware cloth. It's half inch by half inch squares and it's galvanized. We went ahead and she bought me also a Hitachi power stapler. We had to turn the pressure way down because it kept cutting it. But anyway, as you can see, we're starting to attach it. And she wanted it attached from the inside and not on the outside. So that's what we're doing. We're attaching it from the inside. Makes it a little bit more difficult, but she says that way the, the squirrels can't eat the wood. And she doesn't want them to eat the wood. So anyway, that's where we're at right now. You can see we've already started putting it up. And all we're doing is just pushing it in place and then just stapling it. And so we just kind of line it up and that's it. Simple as that. And, all right. And then we're just going to staple this whole thing in and do everything else. So that's where we're at. We'll catch back up with you when we get further along. Probably when we go to do the doors. All right. Square pieces of wood that I just uh, cut and screwed together and then I put the mesh on top of here with the staple gun as you saw. Now what they're going to do is there's a left and a right side and that way you can take out one at a time and clean and rake up and all the trash that might accumulate underneath there and clean it up and be able to put them right back in again. So what I did with the rest of the material whenever you go to put this mesh on there we just do it with a staple gun and once you get it stapled then you go ahead and, and I have found the best way to cut this stuff is with a grinder with a uh, cutoff tool, the, uh, a cutoff blade that goes on here.
And you can see how fast that just trims that excess piece off. And then, let me put this up here. Throw this. Throw this in scrap pieces that I'm going to be coming in. And now that's the bottom of the cage. And that way we can take these panels in and out as needed. And here, as you can see, top right back. So as you're looking at the cage, it's on the right hand side, and this is facing up. So that's what we're going to do now, take it over there. And this is the door that we made. Basically, we just uh, made a square, added a centerpiece in here, and uh, attached it all together. We attached it with little brackets. You know, this is a T bracket here, that's an L bracket there. Anyway, come inside here, this in the back, and it should just fall right into place. And because it doesn't, I have to adjust a little bit. Okay, here's the squirrels going into their new enclosure. They're kind of excited and apprehensive at the same time. This is how the cage is set up. We attach this uh, clear plastic roofing material on top and screw that into the top. So that way, uh, it, when it rains, it won't rain on top of them. And we attach the doors to the side. We put spring-loaded hinges on the side here so that when you open the doors, they'll just automatically split, spring back shut. See? Don't. And then we put little latches on there. 